Is big oil the new tobacco? The Surgeon General first concluded that cigarettes cause cancer and other diseases in its historic 1964 report. From 1976 to 1993, six independent studies found smoking accounted for between 6 and 8% of U.S. healthcare costs, which amounted to more than $50 billion in 1993 alone. To recover these costs, states began to sue the largest cigarette manufacturers, Philip Morris, Reynolds, Brown, Williamson, and Lorillard. In 1998, all 46 states, four territories along with Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia, entered into a master settlement agreement with the cigarette manufacturers. It was the largest civil litigation in U.S. histories. To date, over 168 billion dollars has been paid to U.S. states and billions more will be paid in perpetuity. These payments are not just part of the American tax code. Taxes on tobacco are found all over the world. It's known as excise tax in the national tax code and they are enacted on goods like tobacco, alcohol, gasoline, and even airline tickets. Since 1998, Cigarette companies have paid over $1.6 trillion to governments around the world. The chart you're looking at right now shows the actual excise taxes paid by cigarette companies. Government rakes it in with various sound the alarm on fill in the blank taxes. Still to this day, each year, cigarette companies pay each U.S. state and territory a lump sum culminating into a total payout of almost $7 billion annually. It has been an enormous source of tax revenue for the governments. Post-pandemic, governments are going to require new alternative sources of tax revenue. The politicians will appear to try to pay back some of these multi-trillion dollar stimulus packages. A likely source of tax revenue in the United States and abroad, one that would meet very little resistance today, is through a carbon tax. If we think about politicians running most of the large developed world, the tax for the green agenda will be in full force. Carbon taxation continues to be a focal point of discussion among all major nations. So, is it possible the green socialist governments make the oil companies pay for greenhouse gas emissions? The world has known about greenhouse gas emissions for decades. A famous 1982 internal memo from Exxon scientists predicted the world would hit CO2 concentration of 415 parts per million and a global temperature increase of 1 degree Celsius. Last year, CO2 levels reached 409.8 parts per million, while temperatures around the world have warmed 1 degree Celsius. Royal Dutch Shell's greenhouse effect working group from the same 1980 era concluded similar results as Exxon. But are the oil companies truly at fault? I do believe the governments recognize, at least behind closed doors, that fossil fuels played an integral role in the world development and globalization up to this point. No question, we would not be where we are today without oil. But what's next? And what is the right thing to do from here? This is the agenda going forward, whether you like it or not. The price companies pay for emissions going forward is certainly up for debate and a hot topic at all political debates. According to data from the Climate Watch and the World Resources Institute, oil and gas and petrochemical uh, production account for about 3.6 of global greenhouse gas emissions. For comparison, iron and steel production account for about 7.2%. Transportation, road and aviation, and the marine, the big ones that people forget, account for 16.2% of greenhouse gas emissions. So while oil and gas producers certainly should be held accountable for their share of emissions, the easy low-hanging fruit is to go after the big oil companies. After all, it's not like the tobacco farmer was on the hook for billions of dollars when they grew the tobacco. In the United States, it's been loosely discussed starting at about $15 to $25 per ton tax on greenhouse gas emissions. Treasury Secretary-elect Yellen is pro-carbon taxation. 
So is Biden. So is Kamala Harris. So is almost every Democrat. And being a PhD economist who also ran the U.S. Federal Reserve, Yellen will understand that the government needs to find alternative sources of revenue. A carbon tax fits that bill. In Canada, our carbon tax currently is $20 per ton and will rise $10 per ton annual until it reaches $170 per ton in 2030. In Europe, it's every country for themselves with tax policies ranging from pennies to over $125 per ton. How much greenhouse gas do oil producers emit? Surprisingly, as an industry, oil and gas producers, when you include the refineries, when compared to steel, don't actually emit a significant amount of greenhouse gases. Steel, for example, emits over 7% of global greenhouse gases. Oil and gas extraction emits under 4%. Given the green socialist agenda that the first world has now gone, expect all extraction and manufacturing industries to pay a price for pollution. And what was theoretical logic just a few short years ago is now law in many nations around the world. What you're looking at right now is a chart of major oil producers and their annual GHG, which is the greenhouse gas emissions, divided by total production in terms of barrel of oil equivalent, you know, GHG per BOE produced. These 14 producers account for about 65% of U.S. oil production, making it a reasonable barometer for emission levels. The chart you're looking at is those 14, the top essentially the top two-thirds of U.S. production on their greenhouse gas emissions per barrel of oil equivalent. The next chart that we have up is the actual major integrated producers around the world. So you'll see Saudi Aramco on the far left and Exxon's the largest on the far right. Suncor's Canada's largest oil producer. But something needs to be uh, disclosed here. Each company is responsible for their own internal GHG numbers. So Saudi Aramco on the far left is reporting numbers perhaps at a different rate or using different levels than Exxon. Maybe, maybe not. I just wanted to make that disclosure. Integrated companies produce crude oil, refine it through their own refineries, and sell finished products like gasoline and jet fuel. So it should be expected that their emissions footprint is much larger on an oil production basis, which it is putting a value on carbon in the oil and gas industry. It's going to be pretty simple, and this is what you need to take home. Emitters will pay per ton of GHG levy. And I do see the green energy companies getting net green credits, which can be offset or sold into an exchange. I am sure some of you think that this is a bullshit tax and it will bankrupt the oil industry. It won't, but it is going to change oil production dynamics. This tax will start to move high cost and high emission oil offline and make low cost, low emission oil more valuable and global emissions would drop. There will be ways to play this and profits could be enormous. Click here to learn more about my premium research service, Katusa Resource Opportunities, where I detail the opportunities that I'm personally investing in. Al Gore might not have invented the internet, but he certainly kickstarted a trillion dollar market. We are ready. Are you?